The sacred text of Islam, the Quran, talks about what human beings aspire towards. On multiple occasions, Allah will talk about things like men desire women, or they desire money, or they desire status, or that people desire things like, you know, a house. So people work towards these things because they have strong urges towards them. Even today, young people might want to finish a degree, or might want to you know, get ahead in their career, or might want to start a relationship that they're longing for. All of these things are, are always going to be there, they've always been there. There's a modern manifestation of them today, and there's an older, you know, pre-modern manifestation of them before. But the Qur'an is also very interesting in declaring that all of these things are not actually goals. So if someone's working out because they want to look a certain way, or somebody's working really hard towards getting, you know, getting together with this other person, or they're working towards making X amount of money, that all of those things are actually not goals. They are a means to a larger end. And that end, you know, it dictates all of these minor milestones that we achieve in life. That this life is actually not about acquiring physical things or, you know, physical pleasures even. This life is about attaining purpose. And purpose is found when you live not only to better yourself, but to better the things around you. And so Islam is about submitting yourself to the will of Allah, to the will of God, so that you can prepare yourself for eternal joy and in doing so, you don't deny yourself the pleasures of this world. You still get to enjoy this life. The Quran says, وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَيْشِ Which actually means we put in this world means for you to live well. So Islam certainly doesn't deny human beings the opportunity or even the right to live well in this world. But at the same time, every single moment they spend in this world, whether it's for their own enjoyment or they're working hard, should mean something more than just that fleeting moment. In other words, I don't live for the next movie. I don't live for the next game. I don't live for the next dollar that I'm going to earn. These things will come and they will go, but what will not go is my relationship with my Creator. Something far more superior, far superior and far more powerful. So Islam is really at the, at the core of it, asking you and me to find true purpose in our lives. And that purpose will be to find the one who made us and then see what he, how he wants us to live our lives. And, and in doing so, a lot of people think, and this is what I'll leave you with just to think about, a lot of people think if they find you know, purpose in, in God and purpose in revelation, that they're going to deprive themselves of things that otherwise they could have enjoyed. You know, they, there were no restrictions on them before, and now all of a sudden there are these rules and regulations that are holding themselves back from living life to the fullest. And the opposite is true. As a matter of fact, when one submits to God's will, and one accepts the revelation and the burden that it lifts. Actually, the Quran talks about how the, the advice that God gives, if you were to abide by it, ankum, He would relieve burdens off of you. Life would become so much easier, so much more relaxed. You would find so much more peace and so much more harmony, not only within yourself, but also with the relationships all around you. So the purpose of life in Islam is to find peace within ourselves and peace with our Creator by becoming true servants and really sincere servants to the one who made us. Thank you so much for listening. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.